In this mini lesson, we're going to look at using simultaneous equations to solve circuit problems. To find voltages, currents, powers, and or resistances. We're using the two basic principles of circuit design, which are both derived from conservation laws. The junction rule is derived from conservation of charge, and the loop rule is derived from conservation of energy. So the junction rule says that the sum of all the currents flowing into a junction must equal the sum of all currents flowing out. And the loop rule tells us that the sum of potential differences around any closed loop must be zero. Now potential differences, depending on whether we start low and move high or start high and move low, can be positive or negative. So we need some sign conventions for them. In any kind of source, like a battery or a capacitor, or any other power supply, we count its potential difference as positive if my loop takes me from the negative to the positive terminals. And of course, opposite. If our loop takes us from positive to negative, that is in effect downhill, and so we would consider that change in energy negative. Applying that same hill analogy to resistances, if we go through the loop with the current, we are in effect moving downhill in the potential energy surface. And so we would call that delta V negative. If our travel around the loop takes us through the resistor against the current, we call that delta V positive. These sign conventions are arbitrary and other textbooks teach them differently, but as long as you use the same sign convention and apply it consistently throughout the entire problem, it will work out. So the first step is to analyze the circuit and find out how many independent currents are flowing in the circuit. We have to be careful because we know that when things are in series, the same current flows to them. So I don't want to say that there's a different current through the battery and the 10 ohm resistor because they're connected together directly in series. However, the 10 and the 20 are separated by a junction point, so they're not in series. That means they have a different current just like the 10 and the 30 are separated by a junction point, so they have different currents. So in this case, I have three independent currents. One that flows in the U-shaped part of the circuit, made up by the 9 volt and 10 ohm resistors. One that flows in the U-shaped part of the circuit to the right, that's made up of just those two bare wires and the 30 ohm resistor, and then one in that connecting branch that runs down the middle. So I have three different currents. Um, I've added arrows in this diagram, and the direction of those arrows are arbitrary. They really can just be guessed based on guesses. And if you guess wrong, all that will happen is at the end of this process, you'll end up with a negative sign on your answer. And that just tells you that go back and change the direction. So I'm going to need three equations to solve this circuit. I can generate equations from the loop rule and the junction rule, and we'll typically start with the loop rule. So the loop rule says the sum of the voltages are zero around any closed loop in the circuit. We have to start and end at the same spot. I can draw three loops as shown by the red, or the red, purple, and blue scribbles around the perimeter there. So I can start and go all the way around the outside perimeter of the circuit, or I can go just around that left-hand square or just around that right-hand square. I can only use the loop rule um, one less time than there are loops. So I'm going to apply the loop rule first to that purple loop. That's the, the left-hand square section of the circuit. I'm going to start at the lower left corner and go clockwise. So the first item I encounter is the 9-volt battery. I'm going from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, so I put it down a plus 9. I go through the 10 ohm resistor with the current, so I call that a minus 10 I1. And then I turn the corner and go through the 20 ohm resistor with the current, so I call that a minus 20 I2. Then I turn the corner and head back, and I'm where I started, so I write equals zero. The potential differences across the resistors were written by the fact that delta V equals IR in a resistor. Same process, but with the right-hand square, starting at the uh, center lower junction point and moving upward through the 20-ohm resistor. 
I'm now passing uphill against the current, so I write down that potential difference as positive. That's why you see a 20 I2 in the equation at the bottom. Then I turn the corner through the plain wire, turn the corner again, and I go through the 30 ohm resistor with the current. So I write 30 minus 30 I3. Turn the corner and I'm back where I started, so that's equal to zero. I cannot do a loop rule around the outside loop from 9 volt to 10 ohm to 30 ohm to back to the battery. Because if I did that, then that equation wouldn't be independent of the two I've already generated and my system of equations would not have a solution. So I get my third equation from the junction rule. There are two junctions in the system and I've arbitrarily picked the top one. Current one flows in and currents two and three flow out of that junction point. So the junction rule yields I1 equals I2 plus I3. Now to solve these efficiently, what we can do is use matrix techniques. Rewrite your equations so that all of the variables on the left hand side are in the same order along with their coefficients. And then any constant terms need to be on the right side of the equal sign. So you can see that I've padded out equations one and two with zeros because I3 doesn't appear in equation one and I1 appears, doesn't appear in equation two. That's not necessary, but I thought it would be helpful for you to see that. Then I can use the matrix functions in my calculator or something like Wolfram Alpha or MathCAD uh, to solve this system using the matrix. Um, in your calculator, you have the PolySmelt app, which does that same thing. So you go through, you enter that matrix into the calculator, and it will give you the solutions all at the same time. And so here are the solutions for that particular circuit. In the example I've done here, the unknowns were currents, but they could have just as easily been the potential difference of a battery or the resistance of something. It doesn't matter what the unknowns are, as long as every equation is put in the same order, then the matrix technique will work out. So here's a uh, problem for you to try with a little bit more challenging. It's got two potential different sources in it. Pause the movie here and try to solve the system, and this, the um, answers will be coming up in a few seconds.